Um, we'll also invite on the show now our Alpha Manager for the Day, Tridip Bhattacharya, CIO Equities at Edelweiss AMC. Tridip, uh, morning, afternoon now. Thank you very much for joining in. There's a lot of excitement about mid-caps and mid-caps have had a phenomenal rally. Your mid-cap fund AUM is close to about 3,000 crore rupees, 2,800 crore rupees. Can you give us an indication in the last one month, uh, which are the stocks that you've added on where the numbers look good, where your conviction is very high on the mid-cap or on the small-cap end of the universe? Yeah, so uh, uh, great question to start. I would say that uh, over the last month or two, one of the things that we noticed was that the valuation differential, uh, 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 which was earlier loaded in favor of large cap um, and was against mid and small cap, uh, came to a more reasonable level over the last couple of months. Um, and, and hence, um, mid and small cap as a basket has started doing well. And also, we've sort of, you know, we've been recommending from an asset allocation point, point of view to our customers uh, that broadly now might be the time to allocate a little more towards mid and small cap uh, overall as well. That's uh, the first thing that I would say. Second, um, I would say that, uh, you know, the market is also getting the whiff that in and around current levels, the interest rates have broadly peaked. Uh, or maybe there or thereabouts. And when that happens, then the slightly higher risk buckets of the um, uh, market start to do better, uh, which is what we see in the form of mid and small cap name. So I see a bit of relaxing macro conditions more as a reason behind mid and small cap names rather than really kind of, you know, uh, 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 bottom of tremendous earnings. But the areas that have done well for us in mid cap uh, would be broadly the manufacturing part of the sector, which is industrial capital goods um, and uh, and the likes. And there, the companies that we own, without getting too specific, have actually beaten consensus earnings estimates anywhere to the tune of 20 to 30 percent. So we do think that that part of the economy is really kicking, uh, 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 you know, at a very phenomenal pace. And that's by and large uh, what has helped us in our mid-cap fund overall. Mm. Hi, Tridip. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Tridip, uh, the problem pocket has been rural India, right? Are you seeing signs that that's turning around a little bit? Because that's really, I mean, we are talking about the uh, urban consumption story, which is good. Parts of rural India are still in pain. But in a run-up to election year, general election year, hope is that maybe the spends increase out there with the kind of push that will be given from the central bank, uh, from the central government. What's your sense? How do you see things uh, shaping out here? And will you look to play that theme? Probably kind of, you know, will resist a bit longer. And the reason why I would say that is because, um, yes, uh, overall over the last year or so, the rural focus talks have not been, uh, uh, have, have not really had their time in the sun. Um, and also, as you say, the construct is such that as we head closer to elections, there might be rural spend. But on the other side, if you look at, let's say, monsoon and rural part of the economy is to a certain extent driven by monsoon, then, uh, you know, the, the presence of El Nino as an effect could impact the earnings of these companies for a little longer. Um, that's one. Second, while uh, inflation in general has peaked, uh, my sense is that it might be a little more stickier than what most people think. In that context, uh, we think that uh, uh, you know, a stickier inflation impacts the rural part of the economy a little more than the urban side, um, just because of the percentage of uh, their free cash flow that comes from uh, uh, staples, etc. So both of these put together makes me feel that uh, the near term, i.e. the next couple of quarters, could see uh, uh, you know, continuing weakness on the rural side of the economy. And hence, we would probably wait for a little more bargain to occur before we kind of, you know, play the reversion to mean hypothesis with regards to rural. Overall, our portfolio at the moment would be kind of, you know, overweight manufacturing, underweight consumption, and within underweight consumption, we would be probably underweight rural part of the economy in a meaningful way. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, Swadeep, stay with us. Uh, Lupin is uh, the other one we want to just uh, quickly uh, touch upon. It's surging in trade. Ekta is here uh, with details. Ekta. Thanks for that. Well, yes, Lupin is at a fresh 52-week high in today's trading session. The news with regards to Lupin or the latest news is that they have received approval from Health Canada, which is the Canadian regulator, to market a generic version of Spiriva Generic, which is basically uh, an inhaler drug. Now, this could be read as a sentiment boost simply because the street is awaiting 
the approval of Spiriva generic in the US markets quite closely. Now, as of Q4 FI23, what they had indicated the markets when it came to Spiriva generic is that the US FDA has provided a target action date. So that means that uh, there could be a uh, any kind of indication from the US FDA by July, which would be without an inspection of any of their facilities, and by August with an inspection of uh, Lupin's facilities for Spiriva generic. Now, the latest queries raised by the US FDA are procedure related. The management has said they remain optimistic of a first half FI24 launch. Remember, it's an important drug for them. They are expected to have a less amount of competition in this drug. The gross market size of it is around a billion dollars in the US. Okay, well, uh, Ikha, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, Tridip, let me throw it across to you. Lupin and other uh, sort of pharma names uh, would you, uh, do you, uh, do you, which ones do you own and uh, what's the thought process across the space? I think uh, the pharma looks actually quite interesting to me. Uh, overall, uh, our stance on the sector has been neutral, but within that, our stock selection has done wonders for us. Um, I mean, while I'm not allowed to name uh, name stocks here, I think on the fact sheet, particularly as some of the mid-cap oriented names have uh, driven a good bit of alpha, even though the sector has not gone anywhere. But overall, if you were to ask me from a sectoral standpoint, I think the sector uh, saw the, uh, the boom at the time of the COVID, normalized earnings in the subsequent one year. And now, if you ask me, uh, offers a decent valuations uh, when the US generic pricing is gradually kind of easing off. So again, stock specific, but I think the sector is an interesting juncture where stock selection could make a difference over the next 12 to 18 months. At the moment, our stance would be more neutral uh, uh, in our portfolios. Uh, Tradeep, coming back to that point about capital goods, uh, you know, and manufacturing, the theme that you're very bullish about, Cummins is one of your big holdings. The numbers look pretty good. The stock has rallied. But there are concerns broadly about the valuations of the sector. So would you recommend buying, um, you know, these stocks at current levels or would you wait for, you know, better entry points? So uh, I think it's a great question. I would say, I mean, beyond a point, we are earnings junkies. We look at where the possibility of earnings upgrades are, and that is where we queue up. Um, some of these companies, before, uh, without getting specific, have beaten the consensus earnings estimates in the last earnings season was anywhere between 20 to 30 percent. As long as we see that sort of earnings beats to come through from um, uh, from companies in the in the capitals in the capital goods industrial segment you would see that companies appear expensive but on the back of estimate that are about to go up and hence as long as the earnings estimate keep going up the stocks will probably kind of you know follow them um, so we follow the framework that we follow at Edelweiss long only mf is uh, certainly to look at uh, potential areas of earnings upgrade and uh, and uh, uh, you know stay put there um, for example, within industrial defense is another area there where you know we've seen some of the companies beating uh, earnings estimates meaningfully. So various parts of the industrial goods, not just so, uh, one subsegment, have been doing well. And fortunately, we've have decent we've had decent exposures to them. Mm. Mm. To the final question from my end before I let you go, ITC flashing for our viewers on the screen the most ignored stock and the best performing stock in the last 12 to around 18 months. So at uh, the sense you get is something's got to give now. The numbers have been showing up. I don't know whether that long awaited some kind of intent or corporate action can come about. But that's part of your portfolio. What's the view from here on? I think the stock has done phenomenally well. About a couple of years ago, we spotted that on the back of ESG concerns, uh, certain segments of the market were looking underpriced, even though there were earnings upgrades happening. The multiples were unduly depressed because of uh, some of these ESG related worries. Um, and I think while we are mindful of ESG, we wanted to sort of, you know, align ourselves more towards earnings upgrades as I was talking uh, overall. And that has worked well for us so far. Um, with the amount of volume growth in some of these segments, which have come in double digits, I think as long as that continues, we will stay put. But uh, overall, I think the stock has done well. Um, you know, we are probably not adding incremental weight there as we speak in terms of uh, the, the the staples part of the segment, um, but uh, uh, you know uh, overall, as long as the earnings upgrade come through, we are not kind of you know taking our bets off either. So that's where we are on uh, uh, the consumer staples in general, and maybe a few stocks there or thereabouts. Well, it's been a good call, and uh, you know it's worked quite well for you all. But as you said, you'll be 
continue to track the earnings though you won't be adding on incremental bait on this one just looking at the screen the sense is maybe this year is the big year for ITC let's see whether or not we hear something from the management thanks so much Sudeep for stopping by and giving us your view on a whole host of stocks as well as sectors for the time being though we'll slip into a short break